Let's come check it out. Yeah, no kidding. Have you ever been in a place that is sort of your audio fantasy world where things you never thought you would see and hear from an audio system you can see and hear? Of course, you haven't, not yet. I'm Joe from Gramophone and Ricky with Macintosh, how are you? Good, I'm good. good. Great. I'm glad to have you guys here, this is exciting. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. We are here in New York City at the Macintosh House of Sound which Ricky, I think, is literally like a playground for people who love music and love hearing it in a way that they've never heard it before. Because on the brief tour that you gave us, I'm blown away by what I'm seeing here. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of hard work that we've put into this place to make it into this playground that we are now able to experience. But we are really excited about being able to share it with more people um, and just get people in here to show them what they didn't know was possible. And this is just one of the many rooms that you've got here, but maybe you can start by explaining what you did in this room and we'll take it from there. Yeah, so this is our large reference system uh, with all of the best stuff that we make. So starting out on our tower here, we have all of our sources and the brain of our system. Um, at every one of our systems in the house, we have access to vinyl, in this case with the Macintosh MT-10. It's a really wonderful precision machine. Um, if you've not seen this thing before, I really encourage you to go online and take a look at it. One of my favorite features of it is that the platter itself floats on magnets. It doesn't actually make contact with the table itself. It's just, you know, sci-fi stuff going on here when we're listening to things that are antiquated with new technology here. <laughs> at the bottom of our tower, we have the whole digital section of this system. So this is the MCD 12000, Macintosh's premier uh, CD player that we currently build. It's a really, really capable machine beyond discs, so we also stream into it. We have our TV hooked into it, so it handles all of the digital for this system. Um, it's Macintosh's most capable DAC in addition to being our most capable CD player itself. From there, we go out to the, the C12000. So the C12000 is Macintosh's all analog reference level preamp. So I'm pointing to two boxes when I'm talking about one machine, and that's because we separate out the fairly low voltage full signal path from the relatively high voltage control section of it. So down here we have the microprocessor for volume, display, et cetera. So we keep the music away from the electricity, and that way you have very little to no RF interference between all of those components. From there we, hand, we head out into our amplifier stack. So we have quite a few amplifiers over here. The uh, top MC611, honestly, are just here for show in this system, but you know we know the guys that build them, so we got some extras around. Um, they do show signal, but they're not actually output into a speaker in this configuration, um, although we do swap things around, so sometimes they do get used. Below that, we have an MC1.25K, and as if you look close, you'll see it's in our anniversary trim. Macintosh's 75th anniversary is in 2024. So we have a, a lot of really cool anniversary product. Those 1.25Ks handle the tower section of the Supremas. Um, and then below that is our new flagship amplifier. So this is the MC 2.1KW. This is the evolution of our very, really legendary MC 2KW, which I believe we were in production for close to 13 years. Very, very long time. It just really did the job. But we finally figured out a way to make it a little bit quieter, make it a little bit more power efficient, and I think look a lot cooler. I personally really love the, the new fronts on these as opposed to the old ones. You have the classic globe on the 2KW, and now you actually see some of the internal componentry, which I really, really like. Um, and they're also a 2000 watt completely silent quad balanced amplifier. So we take balanced technology and really extend it out in here. So this is also a multi-box single unit uh, product from Macintosh because that's the best way to get the performance that we want out of these things. So all told on each side of this system, we have 12 or 3,250 watts going to this system, which we'll talk about in more detail in a little bit, but just a really brief overview. The Suprema is a new system from Sonus Faber. It's our flagship system. It's a truly world-class set of speakers that run three quarters of a million dollars. And we'll go into a lot more detail of uh, those in a minute. Um, but yeah, really, really remarkable system. Um, really opens up the eyes and ears to what is possible.
So as we continue this tour of the Macintosh House of Sound, Ricky, thanks again for joining us. Definitely. There are things that you can accomplish sonically with a line array that are really difficult to accomplish any other way with an audio system. Yeah. And if you can, describe to us a little bit about what you were trying to achieve with this room because it sounds spectacular based on what you played for us before. So yeah, this system is our, our reference two system, which it's weird to think that this is the smaller of our reference systems. When you take a look at this thing, it's quite monstrous. <laughs> Um, but starting at the top, we have our two sources here. So we have the MCD 600 for all of our CDs and SA CDs, all of our digital needs. For all of our analog music, we have the MT5. Both of those go into the C2700. So that's our all tube analog preamp for Macintosh. Going from there, the signal path hits the MEN 220, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we get to the speakers itself. That's our room correction. And then that goes from the MEN 220 out to our stacks of MC2KW. So these are the prior generation of our 2000 watt monoblock. We talked about the MC 2.1 KW downstairs, um, but these are a very, very similar amplifier to that just a slightly older version. And all of that goes out to our line array speakers, the XRT 2.1. So as Joe mentioned, there's some pretty special things going on with a line array versus what you would traditionally think of as a speaker. It's a quite a different experience. It's a lot more akin to a live music experience in the way that they disperse the sound. So if you take a look at this, there's a, an awful lot of speakers on this uh, cabinet, and that is for a couple reasons. One, we've got all this power. So all of this power needs to be pumped into your tweeters. And Macintosh and Sonus Faber really believe that using natural materials on those tweeters is important to create a non-harsh sound. Well, if you're gonna pump 2000 watts into a speaker that has natural materials on the tweeters, you need a lot of tweeters to spread that energy out. So each of these is getting an equal amount of energy. And really, if you put your ears quite close to them, it's almost like headphone level until you're in the room because they all add up. If you've ever been to like a bar or a restaurant, you know that lots of little sounds create a big sound. So this is that concept, but in a speaker form. And because of that, they very, very evenly disperse the sound in the room. So it's very, very akin to a live experience in that aspect. It's pretty remarkable. Um, as the guys can attest, it really feels like you are in the space and the instruments are really there with you. Um, it's pretty cool. And on top of that, they get really, really, really loud, which is a lot of fun too. <laughs> and Ricky, one of, I think the primary benefits for the listener once those are in the home is there are speakers that you and I have listened to where you have to be sitting in that one yeah. specific sweet spot or the sound is okay, but nothing like the one specific sweet spot. And this really gives you the exact opposite. You yeah. can be at almost any point in the room and hear incredibly good sound. And that's the, that's the key. <clears throat> point of a line array is that you get very, very even dispersion of both volume and sound stage. So with the line array, the closer you are to the cabinet, the less of these speakers your ears can receive energy from. So as you get further away, you're getting more energy, but dissipating over a longer distance. So really, really great in very deep rooms. If you want to entertain a lot of people in a very deep room with a typical traditional point source speaker, the closer you get to the speaker, the louder it gets. The further you get from the speaker, the quieter it gets. With these, no matter how far away you are from the speaker, you're getting the same volume that I'm getting right here, which once again, really big rooms, ballrooms, really big parties, these are the speaker that's gonna do it. Larry, at Gramophone, one of the things we appreciate the most about selling Sonus Faber is that they also have an affordable series that is still has the hallmarks of Sonus Faber. Absolutely. So here we have the uh, Lumina 2 uh, compact speaker. The name Lumina is actually derived from luxury, minimalism, and natural materials. So we take a look at luxury, um, look at the setting that we're sitting in, the tour that we're taking you guys on today. Um, minimalism in terms of that system. It's very sort of tucked simple. away. It's very simple, right? Um, and then the natural materials to what you alluded to is that what Sonus Faber is known for, sort of the natural wood, the natural material here on the six inch driver, the damped apex dome tweeter, um, and just a very compact package. And from a sound quality perspective, this paired with the Project Electronics, um, it's really great for background music. I have a pair of these using as my computer speakers. Um, there's just a super versatile speaker, a super versatile system. 
Um, and again, as it, part of this overall experience with Sonos Fabra, where you can really run the gamut from something super affordable all the way up to uh, Suprema, for example. Exactly. And to me, this is really fun to be able to listen to a compact little system that's very, very affordable in the midst of the absolute best audio that, that I've ever heard in my life. And, you know, it really kind of speaks to the breadth of what what you're able to do with the Sonus Fiber brand. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a big reason why we wanted to kind of take the speaker off the shelf and, and kind of spend a little bit of time on it and give it some, some love in sort of the grand, um, then the grand tour. Perfect. So Ricky, this time we are literally in the Mac Daddy of all theaters. This is an unbelievable room. Can you tell us a little bit about the incredible things you've done here? Um, yeah, this is a pretty amazing theater room. It's a little bit darker than the rest of the house, so apologize for the video being a little bit dim, but we're in a proper theater here, so um, dark is its typical configuration. Um, as we take a look back behind us, we see a lot of blue lights. This is a, the power of tower of Macintosh amplifiers that is powering our 9.16.4 configuration here. We'll get to more of that here in a minute. Um, at the core of this is an MX180 Macintosh home theater processor. It's the true brain of everything that's going on in here. We're taking the data from our Kaleidoscape uh, streaming processor or Apple TV, and that's going into the MX180 and it's doing everything we need to do. Above that, you see nine MC611s. That's the nine of our 9.16.4. Those are 600 watt mono block that power. What you see in the walls are six of the Sonos Harbor Arena 20s. And then behind the screen, we have three of the Arena 30s, which is the slightly larger speaker with the dual tweeter design. The dual tweeter does a lot for us in articulation and the dialogue. That's a place where a lot of theaters really, really fall short. And that Arena 30 gives us the ability to really provide the detail that you need, especially in loud movies, action movies in particular. Um, down below us, we have 10 of our mi 502s So each of those is a stereo amplifier providing 500 watts per channel of, of those in that uh, configuration. 16 of those channels power our subwoofers. Once again, 16 subwoofers. We'll get to more of that configuration in a minute. And then the last four are powering four of the Arena 10s up in the ceiling providing our height contents to really put this, the icing on the cake of this truly immersive experience. So let's talk about the speakers themselves now. So once again, we have 29 channels of speakers. The nine- uh, 29? 29. Nine ear level speakers and four in the ceiling, and then our 16 subwoofers. The 16 subwoofers is really what makes this room special, um, the way that we have them configured. So we've thrown the traditional paradigm out the window. We're not operating on a 0.1, a 0.2, or a 0.4 of just the LFE content coming out of the processor. What we've done with the nine speakers at ear level and the four at height level, is we've taken 12 of the subwoofers and combined them full range with those speakers. So in each of these directions, you get a lower than what you can feel to higher than what you can hear, full sonic image in each of these directions, providing you with the true immersion, especially rotational immersion, which is where a lot of theaters fall short. You know, your highs and your mids move around the room, whereas the low frequency stays fairly static. In this space, you truly feel thrown around. You know, when we're in the copy of the F-18 and that Top Gun clip, it feels like you're being thrown around the room because the bass provides you with that full sonic image. Ricky, I was just going to comment that for so many people who have been to a really good sounding local cinema, you can appreciate how much of a difference the sound can make. But I think in this space, you can get a sonic experience that's actually better than even some of the finest local cinemas you're ever going to be in. Yeah, I mean, to put a, a true timestamp on this video, I went to go see Dune 2 at the Lincoln Center 70 millimeter IMAX here in New York City. One of, if not the best visual experiences you can get watching a film. The sound, however, does not compare to this room. You know, we watch films in here on the weekends sometimes, and it's a pretty breathtaking experience. I, too, have a hard time going to commercial theaters now. It's a little bit hard to think about this job. And that's one of the remarkable things, I think, Ricky, about the fact that you guys have assembled the Macintosh House of Sound. There are so many different experiences that you can get in this space to really open your eyes and open your mind to what is possible in your own home. Yeah. And if somebody chooses not to exactly replicate any of these systems, that's fine. But to give another look at what you can do, I think is a wonderful informing experience. And, and as you have said, you're getting people now from all over the country who are booking time to come and visit you and get a demonstration in this space. Yeah, and, and really to, to 
put a, a, a final button on it, the Arena product is extremely modular. Every speaker in this, in this line is designed to be within two to three uh, decibel sensitivity of each other. So if you have a smaller room, maybe you use 20s in the front and use 10s on the sides, right? You don't have to use 16 subwoofers, maybe you use eight. So it's a really cool way to take a space and then scale it up if you have the space to do that. Scalability is huge. Ricky, we want to thank you for having shown us. It's been a pleasure. The Macintosh House of Sound. It's been a mind-blowing experience for me. We hope that you, the viewer, someday get a chance to check out the Macintosh House of Sound. So talk with your local Macintosh dealer. Talk with us if you're anywhere near Maryland. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you soon.